In the last vlog we sailed to the Cyclades, we went south to Crete. We searched for the Minotaur in the palace at Knossos and then we headed further west to pick up new crew. We went to look for real treasure and then we finally set off towards Malta. We're going to go to Malta. There's always the possibility of pirates. And me, we're family The bond that we share is as deep as the sea No matter how rough things may come to be You and me, we're family Sing home, hey, long for the ride home Hey, I'll stay by your side home Hey, you'll always be for quite a few days you don't often see anyone really we were really surprised to have some friends aboard some migrant birds that were migrating from the continent of Africa to go north it's about seven o'clock in the morning and the winds picked up we've got a nice steady seven knots and uh, we've picked up a migrant so we came in the morning with a friends for I think the house martins are swifts, I'm not sure, or swallows. He hasn't got a red patch. Anyway, there's four of them joined us last night, and uh, we still got one shelter in here. Weed. So um, their route probably took a bit of a detour. We took on some extra crew at the last minute because um, it's one of the regulations um, at sea is that you always keep a good watch. So Lisa was one of those crew. She did suffer from seasickness, which is not unusual um, if you've never done like a long passage before. What do you get close for your head when you don't sleep on a boat when we're at sea? Yeah. You do get very tired still, even with your six hours off. I worry that the engine's been on too much and it's going to blow up and we're going to have a fire. And then I sort of wonder whether we should do a mayday then, and whether we should get someone to tow us or whether we'd have to abandon ship. And I worry about the keel falling off and the boat suddenly capsizing. And then I try and work out how we would get out of the cabin and whether I'd have time to go and get Rowan and drag her out. And then I worry about the suction that happen as you go through the hatch. So whether, like, whether I should go first and hold on to the kids and drag them out of the hatch and then whether I'd be able to hold them afloat without a life jacket on. So then I wonder whether I should go to sleep with my life jacket on. And I just get so exhausted from all those scenarios that I fall asleep. <laughs> First few days was not much wind, less wind than was forecast, so um, we ended up using the motor quite a lot and maybe really pushing it. It probably um, used up more fuel than we expected and that's something that we came to regret later in this trip. We continued to be visited by these migrant birds. They just became part of the crew really. Um, one, one stayed for virtually the whole trip and um, another one actually went inside the cabin for a little rest and a bit of respite from the wind. Dad, do you think it'll save us for the heart? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. 
swallow that keeps coming back to our boat and twice it's gone inside the boat and we think it might be looking for something to eat but we haven't they only eat bugs and we haven't got any bugs so we've got a swallow in our cabin it's been flying around our boat and it found the entrance in and now it's having a little rest on our mosquito net what have we got guys a swallow Can we just hold it nicely? What does it eat? Have you got an insect? Okay, so it's 3.30 in the morning. Um, I've got the, uh, the 3 to 6 watch. Uh, everybody's in bed. It's quite dark, it's quite a moonless night. Not much to see. Um, I think we've passed through the major shipping lanes. Yeah, it's quite quiet. The, uh, the wind hasn't materialised that we were hoping for. Um, so we kind of motored most of the way, which is a bit uncomfortable, it's a bit rocky and rolly. The batteries are charging okay, the uh, engine's going fine, um, it's just been going for a good 12 hours now. Uh, we had a break for about 4 hours but then we had to put the engine back on because the wind dropped. The three of the four instrument panels put down so uh, we're relying on the char plotter now for our speed and everything else. to continue with our school, homeschooling programme when we're under passage. Are you making something hanging like this and What's going on, Darrell? ourselves occupied is listening to audiobooks so we've, we've downloaded some really good audiobooks for the children and they love just lying on deck and listening to those and I just want to say you are the best papa and mama in the world and you've got to taste it at sea though the first thing I listened to was pretend to make a listen to a moving Beethoven symphony really loud sleep deprived all these normal things that are usually quite easy like what time it is become more confusing and um, more difficult to work out. 
Okay, less than 200 miles oh. now. Long Hello. journey. So what happened on this passage, we, we crossed a date line, international date line, as well as the clocks changed as well. Um, and so some of our phones actually updated um, by themselves, but not all of them. And so there was a lot of confusion about what actual time it was. Some of the phones have changed times. I don't know why. Daylight saving, I think. If it was nine o'clock, would the clocks then be 10 o'clock or eight o'clock in your Ten. view? Ten. Well, actually they didn't, they did the other thing, they went back. That's, well, that's what's confused me. Yeah, we're all confused. So the times, the clocks, some of the phones have gone back an hour. That weather station seems to have done that as well, because I'm sure I put it forwards. My no, phone hasn't my, changed at all. The way I remember is it springs, his phone's got springs no battery. forward, falls back. So I've changed my clock, my watch, and I'll change my phone later. So I've kind of, I, I lost an, I had to do an extra hour on my last watch and I'm doing an extra hour on this watch for some reason. <laughs> well, so you've, come, you've come up with my watch. you come up in the middle of my watch. Yeah, because it said nine o'clock on mine and it's actually only eight. Life's so unfair. I have trouble remembering what day it is. So. <laughs> yeah, but the important thing is that we get the right time for our watches because we're doing three hour watches each. So does anybody actually know what time it is? The other thing that is quite difficult for some people, and especially at the beginning of the passages, is, is eating. What we tend to do is have lots of fruit and frozen fruit stocked up so we can make smoothies and just have fresh fruit to keep them going and keep the energy levels up. Smoothie. Smoothie. Yeah, we finally got the wind that we were wishing for. Maybe a bit more than we really need, but it's good, it's going in the right direction and we're going to get there quicker. Otherwise we would have been hanging about for ages. How are you Craig? I'm good, I'm loving it. This is what I signed up for. Yay, <laughs> proper sailing. reefs in both sails and we're also keeping out for these big tankers that are coming along. So there's one coming up our starboard side. We just called that big tanker because we weren't sure they'd seen us. He seems to be closing in on us but um, it was they could see us and um, it was good to check our VHF because we weren't sure that's working like everything else on this boat. <laughs> So it's four, six to seven, isn't it? Gusting eight. So um, Beaufort scale for six to seven, gusting eight. Um, but it's coming from our aft quarters, that's good. So we'll soon we'll be starting our night watches and um, hopefully we get there tomorrow. I'm doing great. I've on, just in case, but uh, it's a very dry cockpit. This boat loves the heavy weather. Definitely made for heavy weather sailing these boats, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, well, football, that kind of stuff, and uh, I think yesterday she was planning to go to a royal wedding garden party at a friend's place. 
<laughs> which uh, sounds a lot more sedate than what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so we should have had a garden party on the boat, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, it was the... Uh, like a sort of royal wedding garden party with tea cakes. Tea yeah, we've got the tea and yes. cakes. Yeah. yeah. Fine bone china. Oh, yeah. definitely, Fresh yes. cream. <laughs> Scones yeah. and creams and cucumber sandwiches. Yeah. And uh, we could have even put the end sign on, you know, in respect, if it didn't blow away, but I think it might have blown away, don't you reckon? You're not know, sort of a wedding cake, I'm sorry, I didn't bring the wedding cake. <laughs> Never mind, maybe when we get to Malta. Let's hope our uh, other crew is doing all right down below. Yeah. So the kids are down below watching a movie. Hi, children. about 20. Highs and the lows. The lows are how choppy it is and feeling seasick. And when I went, to, when I go to bed, I don't like having showers um, when we're on sailing because then you just rock from side to side and keep falling over. So when I go to bed, I'm always covered in salt, and so it's never very comfy. <laughs> and then because um, we're leaving Greece now in Malta, there is going to be no gyruses or superlakis. No. Malta's near Italy, so in Malta it's going to be pizza, pasta. <laughs> the highest is we just saw a dolphin. <laughs> Feeling seasick and yeah, and vomiting, like I did now about an hour ago. And um, the highs are that we just saw a dolphin, and we're going to a different country. It's yeah, the well. first time we're ever going to a different country. You like having new people. And how about your chocolate chip cookies that you ate? What am I high? My high is. You had loads of them, I didn't have you? A we had the engine on a fair bit to keep up the speed, but. Um, this obviously sort of put a lot of pressure on the engine and the engine's quite old as well so we were beginning to fear that there were going to be engine problems um, the sounds were a bit strange there was smoke coming out we lost a lot of oil in the engine last night a lot of smoke so uh, we turned the engine off and I put about a litre of oil back in the engine so we think there's something wrong with the engine I think maybe it's uh, burning oil so the piston rings are probably a bit shagged or something so. Yeah, that was our drama last night, where um, a lot of smoke coming out the engine. So yeah, we're trying to work out what that problem is. We need to get that sorted out. But now, I'm just making sure the generator's not ticking over. Is it on? So how are you going to stop it coming on accidentally? Gaffer tape. Gaffer tape, yay. 
Yeah, we've only got 23 miles to go. No. And it's a very busy spot because I suppose no. everyone's going to Malta, but also there's they're trying to slip through between Malta and North Africa, so I think that's why it's busy. Because it's like a whole fleet coming to destroy us. They think we're attacking them, but I think they're attacking us. <laughs> This is us here, and that's the Armada heading for us. Whoops. Run out of fuel. I thought you said we had enough to get to America and back. It's for the video vlog. <laughs> Um, because we'd ran so low on fuel, um, air had got into the system. It w wasn't a major problem because we did have some spare. So we put the fuel in and then um, tried to bleed the air out of the system, but um, the engine still wouldn't start. So we realised that it was probably a slightly different problem, maybe. Our fuel gauge um, has never worked since we've had the boat. And we've also discovered that the, um, the dipstick that goes into the fuel tank has is snapped off but it's quite difficult to notice so we're not getting accurate readings of our fuel anyway so we couldn't start the engine it was getting a little bit more tricky because the wind was dying slowly and um, we knew we had to get round uh, a breakwater two breakwaters to get into the main harbour there's not much wind and you're not allowed to anchor in most most of the port of Valletta which is where we're going we managed to get online because we were close enough to get some phone numbers and um, we were given other numbers, so we called them. So eventually, after lots of calls and so forth, we've managed to get hold of the marina. So we've got to get into the breakwater under sail with very little wind on our big heavy boats. There was a lot of large tankers and super yachts coming out. The rescue coordination centre asked us if we wanted um, any assistance. They asked us if we were in distress and we said no we're not in distress we, we would be able to sail in but um, we were a bit concerned about all the large ships coming in and out we, we were aware that we would be um, in their way we were told we could go in and then another tanker came out um, but just as we were going in another super yacht kind of came out and then um, it was quite a big relief because the pilot boat just came over to us and said you know what we'll just take you in because you'll be here all night and we've got a lot of ships that need to come and go so um, they just gave us a line and pulled us in um, to the harbour and they took us all the way to um, Grand Harbour Marina. I don't know, I feel like I've done a lot of toes in my life for other people, so maybe we're getting our chance today. So we're getting towed in by the really cool pilot boat in Malta. Nice country, Eddie. Not the best way to end up on is it? No, it isn't. This is the entrance to Valletta. So this is the bit where like, we're really reliving our trauma because those are the lights that we saw at night when we had engine failure. So you have to get permission from um, Port Authority, which is on Channel 12. So we were hanging out out there somewhere, um, trying to hold our course, but we didn't have any steerage because we had no wind. So um, it was around out there, maybe where that boat is out there, which is when the pilot boat came over to us and then the Enna just pulled us in because we were in the way really. Apparently you can anchor there, but they didn't give us permission to anchor there, so I don't know why. We were taken over to Grand Harbour Marina, which is just around the corner of um, Fort St Elmo. And um, you can see one of the super yachts on the end, but um, I just look at that and all I think about is us trying to get in under sail with no wind um, and getting in the way of everyone really. When we arrived in Grand Harbour Marina, we felt very small in amongst all our neighbours. But there's nothing that a good English breakfast and a Yorkshire tea can't help with. Post-trauma. <laughs> Post-traumatic breakfast. This is just to remember the breakfast, you don't have to say anything. <laughs> it's beautiful. Happy. Happy crew. It's alright in the end anyway, all safe and sound. It's a super maramoo. <laughs> Thank you very much. The thermal charger is seized up. And then once everything got loaded inside, see what we can do. Basically not a lot.
Um, not right now, honey, because I've got the generator going. There's a lot of ships out there, but they all seem to be avoiding us. So I'm not really bothered about that, actually. You and me, we're family. No matter how far away we've grown to be, we travel on to unknown destinies. Okay, so thank you for everybody for watching these videos and thank you for sharing them. Thanks especially to the patrons for um, helping us to get the equipment to create these videos, to edit and then produce them and also to get ice creams for the children to keep them out of the way so we've got time to um, create these video vlogs. Thanks a lot. And if you want to do it, do it.